Well, I thought it'd be fun to document us uh, restoring this Alice Chalmers C tractor. And we used the uh, time lapse function on the iPhone instead of taking a million pictures throughout the process. So now what that has left me is about, uh, so far, 11 minutes worth of footage of us running around trying to fix up this old tractor. And my goal is to have it in three parts. This way, uh, each part's not terribly long, about 10 minutes each. And uh, that means in 30 minutes, we'll be able to watch and review how this whole process went over the course of a few months. So this is a three-part series, How to Restore a Tractor, with every little detail we'll go over. As you can see, we're already taking it apart. My son does a good job of keeping all the tools organized and making sure I don't get distracted. And uh, the whole point of this project is just to build a nice tractor to play around the yard and uh, enjoy maybe at tractor shows. I don't play in any pulling events or competitions or anything like that. I just want something that's reliable and safe as possible so I can then, uh, enjoy it, not worry about it getting wet or letting it sit out overnight if I have to. So the, the plan is to take everything apart, fix everything, prep it for paint, and then uh, paint it all when it's assembled. This part here, the rear drawbar, the pins were rusted shut in the rear end housings, so I welded a bar onto the pins and uh, rotated the pins until they came out, and sure enough, the drawbar pops right off. Boom, just like that. And the brake bands are uh, notoriously hard to get in and out, so I implemented our engine lift to uh, pull them out of there. Worked out pretty well. And here's my son getting ready to help out. So he got those brake pins out. And here we're going to pull the engine off of the uh, tractor using a custom made setup I have. If you see, I don't have any special tools, just basic uh, shop stuff. So you might see some things I do that don't make any sense, but at the time that might be what I had. So. Speaking of, something as simple as uh, taking the wheels and tires off on something like this for a guy like me is a little tricky because I don't have a lot of jigs, I don't have a lot of uh, stands or engine stands or high lift floor jacks, so I just make do with what I have. There you go, as I was saying. Pulling off the torque tube. The grease inside those rear end housings was uh, incredibly thick and sticky. I was surprised um, how bad they were. It's supposed to be gear oil, so like 80 or 90 weight, but whatever was in there was so uh, so full of water and sludge that it was, it was bad. So pull all that out. And here's the rear PTO. gently persuaded away from its transmission. And taking out the carriers so I can remove the rear end. The carriers had a lot of noise, the bearings did. So uh, 
I decided I would just go ahead and replace all the bearings and all the seals in the rear end. So here I am pressing on uh, new bearings. The bull pinion and the um, lower axle seals and bearings were replaced as well. I didn't take a uh, fast motion video of that because it was so frustrating I had to do it like three times. But uh, they got done as well. And so here I am trying to reinstall the rear end with um, new bearings and new races. I'm trying to get the uh, to play just right using the shims that were on the tractor originally and I think um, you'll see here in a little bit I had to improvise because no matter how I set the springs it was just too tight I had no backlash so I cut little shims and put them underneath each one of the bolts and I know um, it was going to leak a little bit so I slathered the outside of that area with um, gasket maker to try to keep the leaks down and uh, later on when I did fill it full of oil it leaks a little bit it's a little tiny dot every once in a while it's not bad but uh, I knew it was going to leak as I was making those shims but it's an old tractor so what do you expect alright PTO goes back on and then on to the brakes I got new drums and I heated them up and uh, I had to turn down the outside because they wouldn't fit inside the axle housing. But then as you can see as I go to put on this drum it just fought me the whole way. And I think what happened is um, one of the axles is a factory axle and one is a aftermarket. So I was able to uh, hammer it on as far as I could. It's not perfect. It's probably uh, about a quarter of an inch shy of where it should be but uh, I think it's going to work just fine like it is somewhere around right here I remember pulling my back really bad so that was fun All right, put the covers on the bottom of the gears and that's the oil seal for the uh, front drive axle and a cover plate for the transmission. I bolted the uh, axle to that spline shaft. It's supposed to have a cotter pin, but uh, I figure I'm not taking it apart again, so I just used a bolt and nut, quarter inch. I had to drill out the axle a little bit, but uh, this will work out better than any cotter pin will. So here you can see the, the drum is almost right where it has to be, it's close enough. Then I reuse the old pins. I ended up not using the old C-clips because they rusted so bad. So instead I drilled through the pins and used a, a cotter pin inside of each one of the housings to keep them from moving. You can see that right drum is closer to maybe a half inch where it should be. but. Um, it, it, so far it seems like it's going to work out okay. And here I am putting the springs on. And disassembly of the engine. I never had this engine running, uh, so I have no idea if it had any uh, problems with it or not. If the compression was bad or the oil, was, oil pressure was bad. I just assumed I'm going this far, I might as well rebuild it. So I broke the... Uh, that pulley off, I had to go buy another one. So once I uh, replaced all the seals and bearings in the rear end, start to reassemble the tractor. Like I said, I want to uh, paint everything as it's built, all in one piece. So uh, I'm starting to put stuff back together here, including the steering. And I wasn't sure if I was going to build this before I painted, but the more I thought about it, uh, 
I don't plan on this sitting outside and it's uh you can get to a lot of these spots with a really good paint gun, so I just plan on doing everything all at once. And prepping for paint, I used a needle scaler from TP Tools. Um, it makes a mess. It's loud. <clears throat> it's slow. But I wasn't going to sandblast all this because I just I'd have to do it outside. It's freezing cold out. And for what I'm doing here, I think this is going to be even better. So it takes time to go through each part. Um, but when you're done, you have a nice rough surface for the paint to stick to. And now here finally, finishing up with the needle scaling. So this is part one of three of my tractor restoration.